And you're good to go, Father. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. This is Saturday of Easter week. So uh, yesterday I got a note in the mail talking about Holy Week, except it was called Easter week because it was the week leading up to Easter and a lot of people call it that, right? But no, no, this is Easter week. This is the one. We know that. So later on um, today, I will be talking about a couple of the interesting things about today, especially with historical action and what it's called. And then tomorrow, the same thing. What it's called has a long history of things. And it's very, very fun. And all of them have different wonderful subtleties that are just part of it. But when it comes down to it, it's just yet another day of Easter. So it's a lovely thing. As we do, let's begin with our prayer. Queen of heaven, rejoice, alleluia. For he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's sing it. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Quia quem eruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicutixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, alleluia. Nice and easy. So, as I was saying just a second ago, and as we were talking about before we started, the names of these days are interesting and change. And um, I'm not sure that they change, they're more like additive. It's this and this and this and this. And the, the latest one is that, yes, tomorrow is Divine Mercy Sunday. Now, there's a very strong connection there. And it's not just an arbitrary thing. It's very much on purpose to go along with the devotion of the Divine Mercy. And this is something which is very much established to be that Sunday that is after Easter. It's something that's very important. And this is also why, like, the it's, it's, it's very nicely consonant that the novena that has been taking place all these days at three o'clock begins very properly on Good Friday. There's a, you know, this is, this is the mercy after all. So having said all these things, let's dig in. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality, those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John and perceiving them to be uneducated ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they offered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another saying, what are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in, his, in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Victi me pascali laudes, himol and Christiani. Agnus redem it oves Christus innocens patri, reconcilia vid peccatores. Mors ad vita duello conflixere mirando, dux vitae mortuus regnat vivus. Dic nobis Maria, quid vidis di in via. Sepulcrum Christi viventis, et gloriam vidi resurgentis. Angelicos testes, sudarium et vestes. Surrexit Christus vesmea, precedet suos in Galilea. Shimus Christum surrexis sea mortuis vere. Tu nobis victor rex miserere. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the 11 were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A couple days ago, we were talking about these interesting kinds of kind of additive endings to the gospels. And when we come to the resurrection, pretty much that is the case. In just the same way as we were talking about the end of the Gospel of Luke, we were talking also about the end of the Gospel of John and now the end of the Gospel of Mark. And in all of these cases, it's kind of this something else. It's very much part of the Gospel that is very, very important, that is, appears with these things all put together always. But the resurrection is very much the postscript, the epilogue. It is so much so that it's important to remember, as I said before, really, the resurrection isn't so much part of the narrative or the climax of the narrative as something which is lived out by the faithful. The resurrection is very much about belief. The, very, the resurrection is very much about not just that people believe, but very, rather our personal commitment to belief. This is very much the triple underlined message of the week. So when it comes to our own belief in the resurrection, when it comes to our own experience of the Christian life, it is based on this. This is the thing that convicts us and so makes us Christian. 
So as I was saying before, this is kind of like the, 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 the fulcrum day. This is, this is the day when things change a little bit into what's going to be now the Easter season proper, as opposed to this octave of Easter that we've been celebrating until now. The liturgy changes, the shape of things change a bit. This is the last day for the sequence, for example. The Easter sequence is now finished. It is done. The, the various other kinds of little modifications in the liturgy also used to be that they would end today, now they end tomorrow, but still kind of like the same thing. It's now is the time. This is the last day of this. A week ago was Holy Saturday after all. A week ago was the day after Good Friday. And now we're in just the nice and easy time of Easter. So historically, today is a really fun day because it's today, today is a day so-called the, the Saturday in white. The Saturday when the newly baptized at the vigil a week ago take off their white garments that they had placed on them and put them away. And then after this, begin their life as very normal Christians, just like anyone else in the baptized. Today is that day. Um, <laughs> and that's, it gives me joy. It, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful image. So you have to think about it. So uh, let's put this in context. At the vigil on Easter, on, on that Holy Saturday, today is Easter Saturday, so Holy Saturday, but the Saturday that turns into Easter Sunday, um, they were baptized and were given a white garment in much the same way as we still do this. We, we give those who are baptized a white garment. It's part of the ritual. And um, they were to keep it on for that week, for that week that was also a week of more education, a week that was a week of celebration, not just of the Easter mystery, but also of their own faith that is growing, that is questioning, that has things to be encouraged in it. And at the end of this week, today, now, is when those garments are taken off and put away. Part of that ritual of the white garment is keep this garment unsullied, keep this garment as it is, keep this garment in its state of newness that you may be able to present it to the Lord at his coming. It's kind of a, it's an allegory, it's a metaphorical garment at that point of that which is baptism. And this thing, the, the, the not so metaphorical one, the actual physical one today is the day that it's put away and kept, put away and reserved now. Then we come to what tomorrow is. Essentially today is, um, in that way, today is the vehicle to get to tomorrow, <laughs> where it's the Sunday in white, sometimes called Whit Sunday, although that term in English applies to Pentecost for another reason, but it's the same kind of reason, but it's again, baptism, but a different tradition going on. Uh, but the name of the Sunday, first of all, is Sunday in white put away, or rather Sunday in white taken off. Um, and, and this being having taken off the white garment today, then the Sunday is celebrated. So as part of this whole experience of Easter week, just like in Lent, there have been in the ancient Roman sense, lots of kind of processions going this way and that way, going to this church and that church, depending on the day, what is happening, what is done, how the liturgy is shaped, but more or less the same, but in different places to accentuate different ideas. Today, that is at the Lateran, and tomorrow is a place called St. Pancras, which is a lovely church outside of Rome, kind of, which has a giant garden, and it's very unlike the other churches that are in Rome that are just kind of all clustered together with all the rest of the city. But um, if anything, what I'm describing to you is kind of mechanical and has a lot to do with take the white thing and put it and put it away and then not that. But really what it is, it's about springtime. <laughs> it's about um, the, the expression of 
the enjoyment of slightly warmer weather and that the sun is out and that the birds are singing and that the flowers are blooming and, and all those other things that have to do with spring. It's, it's a, if anything, that really is the context. Yesterday, when I talked a little bit about the Hake DS, that, that chant, which is, this is Easter and what the Alleluia always refers back to. The reason I, I mentioned that, you know, sometimes in music, that melody is quoted. <laughs> it's <laughs> when it's quoted, it's meant to like be quoting springtime. It, it, it doesn't even really refer to Easter when it shows up. <laughs> it's, it's meant to simply say it's spring and life and a lovely time of year. It's, it's meant to be, well, when it's used that way, uh, very much a, just a joyful and happy thing. Now, this isn't like, you know, music appreciation of Father Gray, but still it, that is one of those things that if you keep your ear open to it and you know what the tune is to begin with, you will hear it from time to time. And it's something which is useful and good and a wonderful re remembrance of this thing, which is Easter. Because as much as we wanna talk about Easter, just as it is in the gospel, for example, that's not where the joy is. If you wanna talk about Easter and find the joy, it's not gonna be in the gospel, it's not gonna be in the ritual, it's not gonna be in our expression of it with a lot of the kind of the usual church things. This is the most internal, interior of experiences. And inherently, it is very difficult to pass on and very difficult to talk about because it has the shape of things. It has symbols. It has the outward parts that you see, but only has the inward part that you don't see if you already know what it is. Just the same way the gospels don't give you the meaning, the, the full significance of the resurrection. And for example, today in the end of Mark's gospel, which is um, kind of a very strange piece of text anyway, because this is very much after that, that gospel really kind of finishes in a really big way. Um, it, this is very much the epilogue of the gospel. It, it's, it's kind of this very kind of stilted thing where, and appeared to Mary and the disciples not believe and appeared to the two who were going into the countryside, which immediately should make us think of Luke's road to Emmaus and the, the disciples did not believe. Now, of course, in Luke's gospel, it's quite the opposite. They were already having their experiences with the risen Lord. And in John's gospel, as we read yesterday, uh, we were talking about the several times when Jesus was appearing to them, but that, that, that lack of belief isn't a lack of belief in the resurrection. If anything, it's just a lack of communicability of that belief. When we encounter someone who cannot communicate what the thing is, like for example, someone taking a test, a student in class, if they, if they know what it, what it means, but they can't say that, then the teacher will mark it wrong because they couldn't express what it was they were thinking. Not so with belief, obviously, because there's so much to belief and so much of it is rightfully personal that having the ability to express it does not equal having the belief to begin with. Those are two kinds of different operations. Expressing it is something else. And all the things about Easter, especially Easter week proper, are things that we see on the outside. Oh, there's a giant candle and it's lit a lot. What does that say about Easter? Well, it means Easter to us who know what it means, but otherwise it's a giant candle. There, there are lots of things that are like that, that are exteriors. Even these white garments I'm talking to you about from ancient times are an exterior symbol. They're kind of, they're, they're meant to indicate the interior conversion of a person who has now become a Christian, who has been baptized. But it doesn't, you know, express what the baptism means. It does to us because it reminds, it's a symbol of what we already know, but not in itself. 
the in itself part is something that really does deeply require that very much intimate knowledge of the Lord. And this is the point in the, in, in the, in the year when we remember that, oh yeah, this is what Lent was actually about. As I was mentioning during Lent, it's, it's not really about the penitential practices or the other kinds of things about Lent, prayer, almsgiving. Those are merely the vehicle. That's the way. The internal part of it is to come to the greater understanding and appreciation of the love that God has for us. And here we come to the importance of divine mercy. So tomorrow is Divine Mercy Sunday. That is the latest name of the many names that this Sunday has had. The first name of it being the Sunday in white put away, <laughs> which is kind of not nearly as um, descriptive. <laughs> like, what does that even mean, really? It, it, it describes something that happened today. This is, this is the, the white having been put away. It's, a, it's like a perfect tense to indicate something that has already happened. Um, the other names for it we'll talk about tomorrow. But that which is the mercy of our Lord, that which is the expression of his love for us, the reason why he loves us and the proof of it or the things that happened at the climax of the gospel, his passion and, 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 and crucifixion. The resurrection is very much related to that and very much the thing that we are celebrating now and very much the reason for our faith and very much the center of all of these things, but the doesn't have that same kind of understanding or understandability of it even, intelligibility of it without the first thing that the Lord has loved us. Lent was a time to prepare ourselves to understand this. Easter is a time to be able to celebrate it. And even if we cannot really express it and what it means to us and how it affects us, this is still the very much the basis of our faith. So during this time of the week of Easter, we have been sitting with the stories of the resurrection, which we will continue to do for some time now, especially on Sundays. But it's also a time for us, especially in the season of Easter, and that is now coming to its beginning, now after the week of the octave of Easter, that we should be taking advantage of it to not necessarily even solidify our faith, but to be frankly comfy with it, because it should be a comfy thing. <laughs> now, again, that's kind of a silly thing to say, but for those who understand what I mean, I think it makes sense. For those who do not, it is yet another mystery. The faith is not a hard thing. It's not something that you're setting for for a test. You're not spending hours and hours poring over notes and textbooks. That's not how the faith works. Though that stuff is useful and good too. It's very helpful. It's very beneficial and, you know, just generally a, a, a good thing. But that's not the faith. The faith is something else. The faith isn't a feeling either. It's not just having a moment of, I feel good about it, therefore, this is what I believe. No, the faith is very much a relationship. The faith is something that is existing in the Lord's mercy for us. And now we come to tomorrow, but that's tomorrow. So for today, then, let us bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For an end to the global coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered due to the pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, the unity of our nation and peace in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the dying, and for all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic faithful remain close to the Lord during these times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for the gift of life and the respect of life at every stage, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Barbara asks us to pray for all the souls in purgatory and all the souls of the faithfully departed. Lord, have mercy on them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. She also asks us to pray. Never mind. Um, the Marilys ask us to pray for the conversion of our family and friends outside the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. So one of those very big important things, obviously that we've been celebrating this week, those who have been reborn by baptism, those who have been baptized, well, that's all of us. That's primarily the reason why we celebrate Easter. That's our reason for celebrating Easter. The big, and what does baptism give us? Faith, that's the connection. Cool, we'll talk more about that too. Let us continue with our prayer. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Well, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Saturday and have a wonderful weekend. See you tomorrow. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Father. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.